All right, everyone. So we are in this Nissan Qashqai this morning in for a water pump replacement. This is the 1.6 petrol. Customer said that she had it diagnosed and she said that there is a leak coming from the water pump according to the diagnostics. So what we're going to do is we're going to be replacing that water pump. Obviously, once we've taken everything off as well, we're going to verify it to see if there's an actual leak. When I say everything, I mean like the bell, wheel and stuff like that. And we will see if there's an actual leak because her coolant bottle is leaking. I don't know if you guys can see it, but her bottle is empty. So we're going to get to it and start stripping the car until we get to the water pump to see if it's actually leaking or not. I'm a contortionist at this point. Look, that water pump is off and it's not even leaking anything, John. Like zero, unless I've missed the bolt. I don't think I have. It's not leaking any water. Not leaking nothing. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this uh, this water pump is seized, bro. Seized in place. So, oh, there you go. Why is it seized like this? Seal. Yeah, it's sealed. It's sealed. It's not. It's sealed. I feel like the pump actually broke. It's sealed. The pump broke. Why this seal? You good, mate? Oh, he's gonna get wet. No, I think what's happened is that if it was replaced last time, they probably didn't put any rubber grease on the seal. Oh, smell it. Smell it. Look at that, guys. It is so. Yeah, it's broken. Right, I'd love to think that this was caused by my hammering, me hammering it out, but look, it's actually been scraping melting away from that important to put rubber grease on it on the seal aye 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 yeah look you can see it there that it's been leaking anyway now then people have mixed opinions about airtex branded pumps some people will say brilliant some people say no good in my opinion they're fine drop in the comment section and tell me what you think let's get it fitted oh, yeah. <laughs> why are you crying bro <laughs> Why are you crying? I oh, hurt myself. Tightening the water pump. <laughs> oh, it slipped. New water pump is in now. You can just barely see it, but it is there. Yeah, you can just brand see the new. new. Actually, brand new. It's not brand new second hand, it's actually brand new. Brand new second hand, or Brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to have to remove top mounts. Top mounts, yeah. Of course, top mounts, yeah. We the mounts to on the top. We had to, anyway. Had to. For accessibility purposes. You, I'm trying to talk, bro. Oi! You done? I'm done. Yeah. You're not. We had to drop the engine to get access to the water pump. No, so just we can remove the wheel. Why are you so, so loud, loud, bro? bro? Let's get this done. Now, we're just putting everything back together. I left the engine running so the engine can stop burping itself. Then, I remembered something important. Right, I see people doing this. Okay, mainly at like fast fit stuff. I'm not gonna name them. Fast fit garages. They gun it down, the wheel, and they go all five of them. They'll gun it down and then they will talk it. Right? And then I just see it click straight away as soon as they push down, it clicks straight away. It should do this if you're actually following the right torque value. Watch this. Push it down and then it clicks. If you only push it down this much, you've already gone over the limit. Look. That's what I mean. Look, I'm not moving, it's still the same place. <sighs> and that is that done. And also you must always reset your torque wrench. Torque wrench is not used to check if a bolt is tight enough. Torque wrench is used to tighten something up and set the tightness of it. Just remember that. Okay, so that is us done on this Nissan Qashqai now for the water pump. Next job that we've got is a starter motor for a Vauxhall Zafira. It's gonna be all the way in Harpenden, I believe. So, yeah, man, it's gonna be a long travel, probably about two hours, because we're in central, central London right now, congestion charging zone. So, as you can imagine, we are very central. Let's get to it. We'll catch you when we get there. Hello, mate. What are you doing? Oh, oh, hello, hello, John. Um, I'm doing a starter motor on a Vauxhall Zafira. It's the 1.4 petrol. That's what I'm doing. Who is so. that? You see? Yeah, yeah. Oh, John, 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 John. They might say that I didn't disconnect the battery, but I actually did. Let's get it started. We're in a bit of a rush because uh, we had to get an MOT done as well. Oh. 
Got crepes. Crepes. That one's done, mate. Well, that wasn't so hard to do. We've obviously opted for a good pass. We don't want any of our customers coming back to us for the same issue. We replaced it with L-Stock starter motor, and now the car starts as it should. Oh, that was rather adventurous. <laughs> because look at this, look at the slope. But yeah, the car, I would say it's probably about 15 degrees. I would say maybe 20. That's why we just jacked up one side. Let's see, jack up and then the stand underneath just to make sure we came out alive <laughs> oh brother we come out alive by the way 24 hours later this is a bmw 7 series with all the six cylinder goodness you guys already know how much i love bmws and here well it's a voxel corsa rotten and ready to be fixed so they can go back on the road as soon as possible and good morning everyone it's a very cloudy day it was raining this morning on our way here we're actually two hours delayed because of the m25 there was a massive accident literally a few meters ahead of us and it was a standstill for about i would say 45 minutes wasn't it yeah. Anyhow, we're here to do an oil change on this BMW 730D over here and also brake pads and disc for this Vauxhall Corsa. Brake pads and disc, control arm and also to inspect the exhaust as to what's wrong with this because they apparently couldn't carry out the exhaust emission test on this because there was a blow or whatever. So now what we're going to do is we're going to inspect that, repair all of that. Yeah, let's get to it. Whilst John is doing the oil change on the BMW, I'll be carrying out the repairs on the Vauxhall Corsa by replacing the offside front control arm and also the brake pads and disc. And I can't lie to you, this one gave me a hard time. You'll understand why in a minute. Eesh. 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 Now, there's a fresh, fresh control arm. Look at the difference. You can see that the bushing on the old one is split, hence why it failed the MOT. But now, it's time to put it back on and to find out why it gave me a hard time. Oh, that is rotten. Look at that, man. It's like whole chunks is coming out. Oh, that is finished. Oh my days. That subframe is no good copper grease that's too much <laughs> there you go just put it on that there you go then put it on the rubber so that it doesn't deteriorate there you go I love copper grease no, no, no. Have a look at that. There's his exhaust leak. That's why they can't do the MOT on it. So all we have to do realistically is to move this clamp along a little bit. I think he's just done it a little too far back, let's say. So let's get this one sorted. We'll have a look at it, see if it's leaking after. Got a little bit of exhaust blow there. There you go. So we've just put a bit of sealer in it. Go on, John. Right, so that one just needed to be sealed up properly again because usually what you want to do if you're going to be replacing doors and stuff like that you're supposed to put some of them gum gum stuff around it because otherwise you get leaks and stuff like that 
We're supposed to put it either before or a little bit after around where it joins so that it doesn't leak but that's the reason why it failed because there's an exhaust leak and they can visually see it because the water starts pouring out of it and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so let's move on to the next job off to Burgess Hill to do the same Jaguar that we did a while back probably about four weeks ago for brakes pads and this he's now on limp mode so we're just gonna check that out so let's go to the next job so we have just been to that Jaguar and it wasn't even worth it to be honest with you the CGR valve went obviously with those vehicles as you know with the TTV6 they're proper expensive with the EGR valve he was just like yeah I'm just gonna send it to a fix when I gave him a rough estimate of how much it's going to cost he was like yeah the car is not worth it da, 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 da. so yeah he's sending it off to me by any car anyway we're gonna be moving on to another job which is a diagnostic so we are here on this Citroen dispatch I believe so with this one it wasn't starting just low battery from the looks of things it was just multiple clicking noise when you turn the key so that's step one however it, it's gone it's gone it's gone the check engine light was on now it's gone all right okay well let's have a look anyway so with this one we are actually using the X tool, as you can see there, X tool IP819 TP. So, with this one, the speciality of this scanner here is actually the TPMS. This one's got a TPMS on it, I will show you how it works and stuff like that. It's such an awesome tool. I've used it several times now where you can actually like test the TPMS and you can see how much charge, the frequency, etc. etc. that's on it. So, we'll have a look anyway. But for now, let's find out what's wrong with this vehicle. Right, so what we're doing here is we're just going to test the battery, see if it's still in good health or not. It's a 2019, I'd expect it to be in good health. If not, too bad, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's see. Battery test. AGM. Now it's asking for battery temperature. So as you can see there, it's showing good and recharge, as you would expect from a 2019. But look at this, state of charge is an absolute zero. Yeah, <laughs> look. And also the state of health, it's at 50%. What I would recommend the customer now is to basically drive this for about, I would say about 45 to an hour, just to get it fully recharged again, because apparently they only use it locally. So now, if that's what you do and you leave it, apparently they only use it twice a week as well. So that's not really gonna charge the battery. It's getting cold as well. So I'm just gonna let them know that it needs to be charged. So. Let's get to it, speak to the customer. We spoke to the customer and we actually told him that his battery might need replacing because they use it so infrequently. And the battery is pretty much drained. Well, it is drained, it's at 0% state of, state of charge as you saw. And also the battery health is at 50%, which suggests to me that if they don't use it as much, what's going to happen is just going to die over and over again. But he said that he will be just jump starting the vehicle and use the vehicle more frequent. So I was like, okay, that's fair enough, not a problem. So anyway, this is the last job for the day. Thank you very much guys for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe and we will see you on the next one. On the next one. Peace. Peace. Oh. Thank you.